Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Jacob has made an excellent speech. You know, in our family, we believe that, you know, mutual admiration is essential. But I do, I do mean that, that uh, what he did was first class. So I'm not going to talk about Rothschilds anymore. And uh, I'm just going to say a few words about uh, the World Jewish Congress, because that is uh, what I'm involved in and justifies my position here this evening. Five years ago, and you can see that for those of you who are friends with Ronald, he said, can I come and have a cup of coffee with you? It was sort of late afternoon. He sat down, I said, you know, do you want another drink? No, he said, I, I think you should come and join the World Jewish Congress and become the chairman of the governing board. I knew very little about it. I already knew this was a very prestigious uh, offer. And uh, you know how talented uh, Ronald is when he wants something to happen. Combination of uh, ne never quit, but also with a lot of kindness and smoothness and charm. So the only thing I could do is say thank you, which is exactly what I did. Ronald uh, and the people around him are really quite remarkable. One of the things that I've been, of course, like many of us when we get old uh, and we've been involved in Jewish life, I've seen a lot of Jewish institutions in different parts of the world, mostly in France, and in, you always have a lot of dedicated and uh, devoted people, but not necessarily always uh, very professional and organized and structured and everything one needs to push a complex organization forward. And I must say that one of the things that impressed me the most was to see, obviously I'll come back to some of uh, Ronald's skills in a few minutes, but uh, how much the professionals and the, the lay people, the volunteers involved in the World Jewish Congress are absolutely first class. And it makes, and I, I'm not saying that because it's a sort of you know easy phrase to say and everyone's happy. I really mean this and I believe this. And of course, it makes life so much easier, and one gets so so more stimulated by getting involved in something and when one sees uh, one sees a lot happen. It also allowed me to get to know Ronald much better. Uh, it's not so easy to know Ronald well, because there's a sort of deep side which he hides as a consequence of his good education, and because he's, he doesn't brag, he's not arrogant. And I've observed a lot of his qualities uh, by working together. Uh, he has an dr enormous drive, enormous energy. He has a vision. And he has the ability to draw attention from whoever he wants to talk to and make sure that person listens to him. Because in those marvelous gatherings of the World Jewish Congress, we travel. And uh, there's always a moment where we go and see the big shots. So. Uh, I must say that I saw Ronald with prime ministers, presidents, even the Pope, who was absolutely charmed by him. And uh, all this, of course, on matters of concern uh, for the Jewish people in different parts of the world, which is quite fantastic. Of course, as Jacob said, as Ronald said, we live in a world where an institution such as the World Jewish Congress is an absolute must. It's an absolute must in two ways. It's an absolute must to sort of defend uh, a people, uh, a Jewish nation. Uh, I'm not talking only about Israel, but the people at large from all sorts of uh, dramas, horrors, tragedies that sadly occur too often and where support of all kind is needed. 
but it is also uh, an organization, and it's one of the good things about the World Jewish Congress, which is preparing the future. There is a vast uh, group of young, talented uh, Jewish people involved in different type of activities, business and other things, who are the leaders of the next generations. And one of the things that I've observed in France, where I have had a more, uh, I'd say, uh, uh, strong involvement than in other parts of the world, is how difficult it is to replace the people who get to 70 and 80 and whatever because they're good, because they're liked, because they've been around, because it's convenient, but you need someone of 40 or 45 or 50 to take over. And it's not that obvious. It's not that obvious because you need a combination of uh, heart, skills, and time. And these are three characteristics which you don't always find in, in hectic and complex world as the one in which we live. Uh, uh, availability, availability for those people to do things like that. And I think that's one of the important things of what the, 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 the World Jewish Congress does. Therefore, even if there was no tragedies and the Jews were in peace and were not act, attacked and were not killed, one would need an organization like this to prepare the future of the Jewish people. Now, I don't know, Jacob, what you think Theodor Herzl would think of Israel today if he was around. But I'm sure he'd be tremendously impressed uh, what, has, what the country has become. And it's probably, it would probably, he would probably say that this has gone much further than what my expectations were when I started to battle for uh, uh, creating a, a, a nation in, in that part of the world. So I think that this is this is absolutely fantastic. Of course, there are some still some moments where uh, Israel is unfairly criticised, unfairly attacked uh, from different parts of the world, even from international institutions who should be much more supportive and not always find the, you know, the, 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 the nasty side of the coin and forget so often the good side of the coin. But having said that, we should be proud uh, by what we've all achieved and, and be proud to be part of the Jewish people. Now, just to finish, because uh, I said I would be, I promise to not be long-winded, uh, I just want to say that having been born in 1942 in New York, I was born as a US citizen. It's quite agreeable when you've been born as a US citizen to think that uh, if things go really sour in the UK because of Brexit, sorry, Jacob, or, or, or in Europe for some other crazy uh, nationalist, uh, populist, whatever you want to call, one can come back to America. The only thing that worries me is that some rumors have crossed the Atlantic saying that maybe you can't necessarily uh, become American in the future, even if you were born in America. So the only thing I would like to say is that I hope this never happens. Thank you and good evening. <laughs>